Uh, we will design a continuous beam using the coefficients given in the code. Okay. Uh, bending moment coefficients that are given the code are like this and coefficient for shear given the code are like this. So this is our continuous beam, B1, B2, B3, supporting slabs on two sides, okay, and uh, its uh, end is resting on the free end support, okay. So on periphery, uh, it is supported on 9-inch masonry wall, okay. So, this steps are uh, 150 mm thick, and the center, center to center distance of the beam, that is length of the beam, is 5 meters, 5 meters, and 5 meters. Okay. And uh, this center to center distance is 3 meters. Okay. Now, we will try to understand that how these uh, coefficients are applied. When we come to uh, bending moment coefficients, these coefficients are due to dead load. These coefficients are due to light load. These coefficients are to be multiplied by total load into effective power. Okay. So we will be taking small w instead of capital W. Small w with a unit of kilonewton per meter. So our formula will be W L square by the coefficient. Right? Okay. Now say this is the beam. Okay. Then this is the end support. This is support next to end support. This is end support. This is support next to end support. This is an interior support. Okay. So span moments. Okay. These are sagging moments which are applied near to the mid span. Right. So uh, near mid span of the end span. So this is end span. So it is applied over here. Okay. At mid at the middle of the interior span. So this is the interior span, so it will be applied over here. But support moments. At the support next to the end support. Next to end support is this. So this will be applied over here and here, right? Now, at other interior supports, right? So this is interior support. So this will, moments will be, uh, coefficient, moment coefficient will be applied over here and here, right? Again, this is end support and this is support next to end support, right? So we'll see how it is applied. Let us apply it to our case, right? Okay. The code says when the end of the beam is resting on a free end support, then you have to take a moment equal to total load into L effective span divided by 24. But as we are taking a small W, that is kilonewton per meter, so our formula is W S square by 24. So this is the moment we have to apply over here in our case because the beam is supported on mass study and the joint is to be, is to be taken as part of the case, right? Okay. So coming to the term, coming to this moment, that is uh, near middle of the end span. Okay, so the bending moment due to uh, the dead load will be WL square by 2L. Okay. Okay. And for due to live load will be WL square by 10. Okay. And uh, at middle of the interior span, this is the interior span, it will be uh, WL square by 16 due to lead, uh, dead load, WL square by 12 due to live load. Okay. Now this again is the uh, case of uh, near middle of end span. Okay, so this is repeated over here. Okay, and uh, this again will be the uh, sorry. Uh, we we have to still see the uh, support moments. Okay, let's see the support moment. Uh, at the at support next to the end support. This is end support. This is support next to the end support. So. This are going to be hogging moments, right? So they are negative. This will be WL square by 10 due to dead load and WL square by 9 due to live load, right? So this will be applied over here and applied over here. Again, this is also support next to end support. So the same thing will be repeated over here, right? So this is how the bending moment coefficients are applied to the beam. Okay. Now let us see. 
that how the shear coefficients are applied. So these are the shear coefficients due to dead load for the dead loads, and these are for the live loads, right? Okay. For getting the shear force, you have to multiply this coefficient with total load that is capital W. But we are taking small w that is kilometer per meter, so our uh, our our force will be equal to coefficient into w n. Okay. So at n supports, this is n supports. This is support next to n support. This is n support. This is support next to n support, and this is interior support. Okay. So at n support, due to dead load, it is 0.4 w l. Okay, 0.4 w l. And 0.45 WL due to live load. Okay. Okay. At support next to end support, that is this. There are two cases outer side, this is outer side. Inner side, this is inner side. At outer side, it is 0.6 WL due to uh, dead load. 0.6 WL due to live load. 0.5 WL due to dead load. 0.6 WL due to live load. Okay, again coming to this uh, uh, support, this is again support, this is end support, this is support next to end support. So this is inner side, this is outer side, so be applied over here and this will be applied over here. This is end support, this is end support, right? This is our case, right? But you may have an interior support like this, and in that case, it will be W5, that's sorry, 0 0.5 into WL for dead load plus 0.6 WL due to live load, which will be applied over here. Okay, right. So uh, this is how uh, the moments coefficient are converted to moment, and shear coefficients are converted to shear and applied to the uh, continuous beam. Okay, now. The first step is to understand that how to uh, transfer the load from slab to the spin. Okay. So this trapezoidal load will be transferred to this beam one. This will transfer load to B2. This will transfer load to B3. Similarly, this slab, this area, this loading will be transferred to B1. This load will transfer to B2, and this load will transfer to B3. Right? Now we are given loads from slab R. Factor live load is 4.5 kN per meter square. Dead load is 9 kN per meter square. Okay. Converting this load to equivalent UDL, WE, you can use this formula. Converting trapezoidal load to equivalent UDL. Converting triangle load to equivalent UDL, right? So our case is trapezoidal loading, so we will use this formula, okay? So let us proceed further. Okay, moments and shear coefficient for continuous beam given in IS 2000 are applicable when the continuous beam are of uniform cross section. The cross section has to be uniform. There should be at least three span or more span. At least three span. Okay, the load has to be uniformly distributed load. Okay, we are having UDL, equivalent UDL. The span of the beam should not differ more than 50% of the longest span. Our spans are equal, so okay. Okay. The spans are supported on the point supports. For moments at support where two unequal span meet, or in case where the span are not equally loaded, the average load of the two values of the negative moment at the support may be taken for design. But in our case, okay, uh, we will have the same moments, okay. So no problem, there, there is no need for taking the average, okay? Redistribution of moment is not permitted, okay? When you're using uh, the uh, coefficient given the code for design of continuous beam, then the redistribution of moment is not permitted, okay? Now, design the above continuous beam for exposure, mild, exposure condition are mild, okay? So according to table number five, when the exposure conditions are mild, then you have to take a minimum grade of concrete M20. So we'll take concrete grade M20. And according to table 16, for mild condition, the minimum cover should not be less than 20 mm. So we will take nominal cover as 20. Okay. We will use grade of concrete M20 as required according to table five. 
you will use till FE415 as according to table 16 for mild condition minimum nominal cover should be 20 mm so okay what is nominal cover okay nominal cover is the cover from uh, out face to the outer face of the outer face of the uh, stirrups right right that is nominal cover and uh, what is effective cover effective cover is nominal cover plus the diameter of the stirrup Nomin effective cover is nominal cover plus diameter of stirrups plus the diameter of the main bottom steel divided by two okay nominal cover plus the diameter of the stirrups plus half the diameter of this main bar okay? that will give you the effective cover effective depth is overall depth d minus effective cover okay now, the next step is to find the effective length of the beam the effective length of the beam is found as below clear span is we know center to center distance is 5 meters okay so just our supports are 230 mm thick so this is 115 this is 115 so 5000 minus 230 that is 4770 mm width of the support is 230 okay clear span by 12 is 397.4 now, as according to clause 22.2b, page 35 of IS 456000, the support that is 230 mm is less than clear span by 12, that is 397.5 mm. Well, uh, 397.5. Okay, so we will have to use this thing, okay, to find the effective length of the wave. So the effective, uh, so effective span, effective span should be lesser of this two. Okay. Overall depth of the beam assumed is 550. Effective depth is 550 minus 50, that is 500 mm. Clear span we know is 44770 uh, 4, mm. Okay, that is 4.77 centimeters. Now, clear L clear plus D is 4.77 plus uh, 0.5. Okay, that is 5.27 meters. L center to center is we know 5 meters. Less of this two is five meters, so that will be our effective span. Okay. Now, first we will design our beam B2. Is this beam we will design as singly under reinforced section? This partly we will design as doubly, and another remaining part is singly under reinforced section. And this beam will be designing partly as T beam, and uh, for walking moment, we will be designing as uh, a singly under reinforced section. Right. Let us start with design of beam b2 okay so design of beam b2 okay. size we assume to be 230 by 550 m in case of beam the depth is assumed uh, by practical aspect that uh, the number of feet it's long uh, the number of inch the inches it should, be, it should have its depth it is greater than that okay so i am going to assume it as 550 right mm okay now we will have to find the loads live loads and dead loads now affected live load coming from slab is 4.5 putting this value in the above formula this formula to get the equivalent uh, udl okay. okay we get that equal to 5.94 cubic meter per meter into 2 is because this slab will give a loading and this slab also will give the same loading okay but the load on both the side are same so that is why we do it is uh, multiplied by two here right okay so the total load turns out to be 11.88 kilometer meter the factor load due to dead load is 9 putting the value in that formula we get 11.88 into 2 that is 23.76 kilometer per meter self weight of beam is found to be 4.75 weight of 9 230 mm mesterly on the beam is found to be 18 km. the total dead load is 4.46.5 okay now let us put this loads in the uh in this value in this formula right in this and find the moment right uh moment at support 2 okay this is support so over here okay so this is 
this will give the moment due to uh, attempt load. Okay. So this is one one six point two seven. This will give moment due to line load. So that is thirty three kilonewton meter. Total is one forty nine point two seven. Right. Now coming to the near the moment near the mid spa. Okay. Then this will give the moment due to like dead wood. Okay. That is seventy two point three seven. This will give the moment due to Line load that is twenty four point one five total moment is twenty four point four two. Now at support two and support three the moments have to be the same. Okay, so same moments would be right. So this is how we get the moment. Now we will design. Okay, we will design first. We first the very first check we will do is whether the section is under enforced or not. Okay, so we know. Capital is five five zero. Effective depth is E minus effective cover that is five hundred mm. We know the standard formula, okay, for balance section, okay, that MU when a FE it when it is FE uh, FE four point five, then MU is equal to zero point one three eight epsilon square BD square. So D is equal to four eighty five, which is less than provided. Okay, this is required. This is Provided. So as we are providing more depth, the section is under enforced. So this is the uh, stress diagram which will be applied. But the strain in steel will be greater than 0.002 plus 0.87 F5 by years, and strain in concrete will be 0.0035. This is the balance neutral axis. This is the actual neutral axis. Okay. So this is the stress diagram, concrete design stress diagram, right? And this is the neutral. Okay. Okay, now let us. It is very uh, convenient to do the analysis of the section from where we can get the percentage of spin of the required uh, moment, right? So let us do the analysis first. Our D1 effective cover is 50 press F. Okay. B is 230 press F. D is 550 press F. F5 is 415 plus 10 and F6 is 20. Let us draw the graph. Okay, so the graph is drawn. Okay, uh, we these are the design moment, and you can directly get the PT from this table. Okay, uh, we can see from this graph very uh, something very interesting that this green line shows the section is under enforced. As it turns to red, the section becomes over enforced, and this becomes balance section. The details of balance section is shown here. Yeah. MU limit is one fifty nine point seventy three. Right, and our moment is our moment. Okay, our moment is uh, one forty nine. Maximum moment is one forty nine point two seven, which is less than which is less than one fifty nine. Right, which is less than one fifty nine. So the section is under reinforced. Okay, and we can see that uh, when the section is under reinforced, then uh, PT varies linearly with MU, right? We can see over here that when PT is 0.1, say moment is 20. If we double the PT 0.2, the moment is almost double. So this is a very interesting point, which will be very useful to you uh, in case of curtailment of steels. Okay. Okay. Now let's proceed further. Okay. So we know the section is under enforced. Okay, so we can use this formula directly. Okay, AST is equal to 0 0.5 FCK divided by F5, 1 minus under root 1 minus MU into 4.598 divided by FCK BD square into B into D. This will give directly the percentage of steel. This formula is only applicable to rectangular, singly, 
under input sections. Okay, so our case falls in that. So we can use this formula where you don't have to find x u and you can directly get the value of EST. So EST is found to be 1012 mm square. So we are providing two numbers of 20 mm diameter plus two number of 16 mm diameter whose total EST turns out to be 1030, which is greater than this. Okay, so PT provided is turns out to be 0.895. So this is what we have found at support two and three. Now let us find the steel at mid span. So over here you have to take the moment for the mid span, right? And that is a 97.42, right? Okay. So putting this value, we get EST required is 607 mm square. So provide 220 mm dia bars. The area is 628 greater than this. Okay. And PT provide is 0.546. Right. Now EST minimum required turns out to be uh, 2. 5.54 and our here whatever EST we have provided above is greater than this so it's okay right now the next step is for check for deflection okay so we will check the deflection near the mid span okay so these are the graphs okay our Basic formula, there's a L by D allow, allowable is equal to L by D basic. Uh, for continuous beam, it is 26 into modification factor KT for percentage of tensile reinforcement into modification factor KC for the percentage of compression steel. Okay. Compression steel, we are going to assume it as zero. So when the compression uh, percentage of compression steel is zero, so modification factor will be one. Okay. Now, okay. Uh, from figure four. Okay. This is figure four. Uh, this is figure four. This is figure four. This is figure five. Okay. Okay. From figure four. I S four five six two thousand F S two forty. Okay. This is the formula for finding F is 0.58 Fi into area of uh, section of the steel required and the area of section of steel provided, which turns out to be very near to 240. So we are taking this graph, right? Okay. So when the uh, steel PT is 0.546, okay, so we are taking that value uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.546 we are taking the value equal to pay uh, so pt is 0.456 okay the corresponding uh, value of kt from figure 4 we are taking as 1.2 okay this is figure 4 okay right so point uh, 5 is something over here and here it is greater than uh, 1.2, but we are taking 1.2. We are a little bit on conservative side. Okay. We are taking uh, KT equal to 1.2. KC we are taking as 1 because we are considering uh, there is uh, no compression steel. Okay, whatever steel is there, uh, it is not taking part in taking any moment. Okay, that is our assumption. So KC is equal to 1. So L by D allowable is equal to L by D basic into KT into KC. For continuous beam, L by D basic is 26 into KT 1.2 into KC 1, that is 31.2. L by D actual is 5000 by 500, effective depth is 500, and effective span is 5000, that is equal to 10, which is less than 31.2. So it is safe in the graph. Now comes checks for F. So these are the formulas which we have understood that how to find it. Okay. Now we are taking this case that is V2. This is inner side, okay? So design of V2, uh, size this is assumed, okay? This is our total live load. This is total uh, dead load. Now we will be fighting, finding shear force VU, inner side. This is inner side, okay? This is also inner side, right? 
at support 2 and 3, support 2 and support 3. So we will be using this formula, okay, putting the value of WD and WL, we get total VU 163.54 kN. Nominal shear stress, that is VU by VD, we get 1.422, which is less than 2.8, that is tau C max. Okay. If tau V is found to be greater than tau C max, then you will have to revise the section. Now, we will have to find the permissible stresses, that is tau P. Okay, P -T, uh, we know at support 2 and 3 is uh, 0.895. So, corresponding to this PT from table number 19 of IS 456 2000, we get tau C is equal to 0.4.594. Now, tau V is greater than tau C. Okay. So, additional shear stress will be have will, will have to be taken by the stirrups. So, this is the force to be taken by the stirrup point. So, Vs is equal to Vu minus tau C. This is the formula given. Okay. And we get the shear force to be carried by stirrups equal to 50, uh, sorry, 95.23 kN. Now, let us put, uh, let us provide 8 mm 2 leg stirrups at center. Spacing is found by this formula, which is given in clause 40.4 C, page 73 of IS 456-2000. So this uh, ASV is the area, total area of the number of legs. So we are taking two leg 8 mm dia stirrups. So 8 mm, area of 8 mm dia is 50.26. So 50.26 into 50.26, that is equal to uh, 100.5. Right? And D is about 500. BUS is found. So the space required is 190 mm center. Now, this spacing should be less than the three spacing, okay, even in the code, okay. One is the minimum spacing required by this formula, which turns out to be 394. Another is 0.75D, which is 3.5, and third is 300. The spacing should not be greater than this top, this, right? Or spacing is less than this. So, we will provide 8 mm 2 leg stirrups at 190 mm center to center for a distance 0.25L from face of the both the supports. Okay. So from here, point to file is 1.25 meters. From here, point to file is 1.25 meters. For this area, we will provide 8 mm 2 leg stirrups about 190 mm cm. Now, and provide 2 leg uh, stirrups about 300 center center for the in-between remaining area. So provide list of this. Uh, List of this is 300 mm, so provide that stirrup so okay. okay. so This is how the check for shear is done. Okay. Detailing of main steel reinforcement is shown at the end. Okay. Now coming to the design of V1. Over here, we are reducing the depth of the beam. Um, the depth of the beam for V2 was taken as 550. Over here, we are taking as 500, right? The section of the beam is 230 by 500 because we want to design this beam as a double reinforced section. Okay. So D effective depth is uh, 500 minus 50, that is 4,000. So this is our factor line load, this is our factor dead load. Okay. Now coming over here, end moment is given by this formula, that is 60.37. Okay. Then uh, near, near middle of end span. This will give you the um, uh, moment due to dead load, and this will be the moment due to live load, which is 125.7. And put, okay, this will be the moment due to dead load, this will be the moment due to live load, which is equal to this one, 148.2. Okay, now for maximum moment that is over here, okay, we will have to do the check whether the depth of the section is over reinforced or under reinforced. Okay, so we know the formula effective depth is equal to mu by uh, under root uh, mu by 0.138 FCKB, which is 483.2, which is greater than 450, which we are providing. Okay, so the section is over reinforced wear, which is not allowed. So we have we will have to design this section as W reinforced section. Okay, at support two. As the other moments, okay, 
other moments that is are less than this okay so at over here and over here we will design the section as single unit post okay <coughs> so let's let us first do the design of double unit post okay so basic theory for the double unit post section okay this is a double unit post section this is a strain diagram for double unit post section the strain at the steel level will be point it is an fi es5 plus 0.002 Strain in, out, strain in outer most concrete phase will be 0 0.0035 and strain at the level of compression still will be okay so this is uh, subdivided in two parts one is balance section plus the auxiliary section part this balance section will take the balance load and the remaining additional okay, this balance section will take the limiting moment and the additional moment that is total moment equal to uh, moment is equal to uh, total moment minus the limiting moment. So that additional moment will be taken by this steel that is EST1 and EST. Okay. Total EST1 plus EST limit will give you EST and this EST will be applied at the compressor steel. Right. So let us start the design. Okay. For moment at support 2 equal to uh, 148.2 okay uh, we are taking fe415 xu balance we can find uh, by for fe415 0.479d okay that turns out to be uh, 215.55 xu xu balance or you can say xu max okay so this is 129.33 uh, sorry 215.59 now you can find ME limit that is equal to um, 4C into the gram. 4C is 0.362 FCKB XU balance or XU max into the gram. Okay, this is the gram, right? So that turns out to be 129.33 5 kN meter. Or you can also use the formula directly given in the code for finding ME limit. ME limit is equal to 0.1388 into FCKB square, which also gives the same value 129.335. Is our MU 148 is greater than MU limit? Okay, so we will design this as a balanced W info section. Right? So let us find first the EST limit. Okay, EST limit is equal to MU limit. Okay, the moment over here is MU limit. Okay, so T is equal to 0.87 FI into EST and into liver arm that is. Minus 0 0.6 uh, 4.0.416x max. So EST will be equal to MU limit divided by 0 0.87 FI D minus 0.416x U balance or X max. You can say that turns out to be 995 M squared. So this is our EST limit. Right? Now finding additional moment. Additional moment is total moment minus MU limit. This is total moment this is MU limit. So this is additional moment. For which we have to provide AST1 and AST. Okay. Now, first we will find force TT. Okay. So, TT we know that TT into this distance is equal to additional moment. This distance is known to us, the MA is known to us, we can find TT. So, TT is equal to MA divided by lever arm, that is D by V dash. So, you get 47162.5 Newton. Okay. Now, we can find the additional area. AST1. PT is equal to 0.87 FI AST1. So uh, AST1 is uh, sorry. Uh, okay, AST1 is equal to TT divided by 0.87 FI. That is equal to 130.63. Right. Now when you add up this AST limit and the one okay, AST one is uh, equal to this much okay, and you get the total steel AST okay. Now we have to find ASC okay. We know from equilibrium okay. Okay, first let's see that this is the AST required. So we provide 320 mm bars plus 116 mm bar. Okay, so AST provided is 1143, which is greater than 1. 125 okay 
So PT turns out to be 1.014. So from equilibrium, we know C is equal to T and CC is equal to TT. This is equal to TT. Okay, now we have to find the strain at the level of compression screw. Okay, let me see this formula. Huh? D dash we are taking as 50 here equal to D double L. So putting the values of D dash, this x to minus we know 215.55, we got we get strain equal to this much. So for the corresponding strain from the design chroma curves of screw for the chrome bars, we get F y equal to this okay but we have to find fsc if the steel is in compression then this stress has to be reduced by the stress of concrete so that will give you fsc so fsc is equal to 343.85 newton per meter square now you know cc so fsc into ac is equal to cc so ac is equal to cc divided by fsc simple okay so compression steel is equal to cc divided by fsc is equal to 137.15. So provide two 12 mm diameters, which is equal to 216 mm square. It is greater than this, and it is also greater than the minimum steel required. Putting by, by this formula, we get this 212 mm square. Okay, so as we provide, okay, uh, yes, as we are providing AC more than the required, the let me let's understand that. Okay. This is a program for the brain into section. Or of that D is 500. Okay. Uh, okay. Even we are taking as 50. D11 we have taken as 50. B is 230, press F. FI is 415. Uh, sorry. FI is 415, press F. FCK is 20, press F. And design moment, our design moment is. Okay, our design moment is uh, 148.2. Okay. 148.2. 148.2 and let us calculate again. So, okay, uh, as the design moment is greater than 129, there is limiting moment. So, we are designing this section as a double input section. Okay, the total ASD over here we get is say 1123.5 and we are getting over here as. Uh, <clears throat> One 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 two one one two five and uh, here we are getting uh one one two three point five okay and uh, ESC we are guessing getting as one three six and here we are getting a uh, one three seven right so now we can see that this is our uh, balanced neutral axis now our ESC is one thirty six now if we increase this A then this neutral axis will shift toward upward. And when this neutral axis will shift towards upward, then the section will become under reinforced. Okay? So this is how uh, whatever AAC we get, we should increase the AAC so that the section becomes under reinforced. Okay? Okay, so let's move further. For moment near the mid span, there is one to five, we know our limiting moment is uh, one to six. We have seen over here. Limiting moment is one to nine. Sorry, okay. There's one to five is less than uh, one to nine, so the section is under enforced. Uh, under uh, singly, uh, we'll, de we'll design the section as singly under enforced at the mid span, okay, near the mid span. So we can simply use this formula. And uh, MU we have to put equal to 125.7. We get area of steel 957, and we provide 225 diameters. The area is 980, greater than this, so okay. PT is 0.9468. Okay. Now finding the steel for the moment at the support. This is the end support moment. Okay. 
less than the new limit. So design is singly under imperfection. The steel required fire is found to be 404.37. We provide 120 plus 160 mm diabars and the area of steel is 515. So represent this, okay. The PT is found to be 0.497, okay. And EST minimum required is 212. Our steel provided is greater than this, so safe. Okay. Now comes checks for cap for deflection, right? Uh, again, using the same formula, we know figure 4, F is equal to 0.58 FY, area of section of steel required and area of section of steel provided. We get as this as 237.4. Taking this as 240, okay, from figure 4, we get. For PT, uh, 0.9468, we get KT equal to 1, okay. And this we are taking as 1, okay, because we are not considering the uh, steel in compression zone to be taking part in the moment because we are designing this as a singly under effect, right? Okay, so this we are taking PT at center, okay because we are finding the deflection at the, near the mid-span. So, okay. And at near the mid-span, we are designing as singly under mid-post section. Right? So L by D allowable is equal to L by D basic into KT into KC. 26 into 1 into 1 is 26. Okay. L by D actual is 5,000 by 450. Our effective depth is 450. So this is 11.11, less than 26. So it is safe in deflection. Right? Now, let us check for Shear, okay. So here the design support, right? Total factor live load is 11.88. Total factor dead load is 46.07. Okay, so we will be using this coefficient. Okay. Okay. Now, VU at the outer side of the support two. This is support two. This is outer side, right? So 0 0.6, 0 0.6. Okay, so. In the formula, putting WD and WL, that is live load and live, uh, dead load and live load, we get a shear force as 173.9. Okay. Nominal shear stress, we get a 1.68 less than tau C max. So, okay. Now, our T support is 1.01, 1.014 uh, at the outer face of 2. Okay. And corresponding tau C is 0.625. Now, tau V is greater than tau C, so additional shear stress will be will have to be taken by stirrups. So VUS that is force to be shear force to be taken by the stirrups is found to be 109.2. Putting the value over here, okay. Again, we are using 8 mm two leg stirrups, finding the spacing. So we get 149.6 mm center to center. Now our spacing should be less than these three. This is 394, 337.5, and 300. So, as it, it is lesser, so we will provide two leg stirrups at 145 mm center to center for a distance of 0.25 L from the face of support 2. Face okay. of support 2. This is face of support 2. So, over here, for this length, we will provide 8 mm two leg stirrups at 145 mm center to center. Right? Okay. Now, let's find the shear force at the end support. So, this is the uh, coefficient which we take. Okay. okay, now please remember, code is mentioned when the beam rests on free end support, then you have to increase this coefficient by 0 0.05. So, instead of 0.4, you have to take 0.45. Okay, instead of uh, 0.45, you have to take a 0.5. Okay. So into dead load, into live load, is a total shear, okay. Tau V is this much, less than tau C max, okay. Provided PT is this much, tau C corresponding is this much. Tau V greater than tau C, additional shear stress will have to be taken by stirrups. PUS is found to be 83.67, okay. Um, we are again using 8 mm two leg stirrups. Center to center spacing is found to be 195. This should be less than these three which is less, so provide uh, the stirrups at 190M center to center and for a distance of 0.25N from the end support. So this is what we are providing at 190M. Right? 
okay now and uh, provide heat m2 like steel at 300 that is lesser of this three in for the remaining area right so this is how the steel starting with okay okay in case of doubly reinforced section if this area is doubly reinforced okay in case of doubly reinforced section we have we provide compression steel so the steel diameter and spacing should also satisfy the criteria for column ties okay this is a very important clause. The spacing of steel should not be less than or least diameter of member to the 16 into least diameter of the bar is to less than 192 and 300. We have been for 145. So it is okay and satisfied. Okay. Now, okay, now let us come to design of game B3. Okay. Uh, we will design this portion okay that is for positive moment we will design the section as a e right and and uh, for hogging moment we will design it as a single center right because for uh, for getting a deep beam action it is necessary that the plane should be and the operation right okay so this is our factor that load factor that load over here we are again taking the beam size as 230 by 550 by okay right so this is a t beam this is flange this is web okay for t beam action the flange and web should have a monolithic joint and provide transfer steel in the slab for integral action transfer steel right okay when we have a system of slab and beam like this okay the spanning of slab is like this okay so the main steel will become the transfer steel but sometimes it so happens that the uh, slab beam system is like this that the main steel of this uh, slab is parallel to the beam okay then you have to provide additional transfer steel at least 60 percent of this main steel okay greater of this two right for a distance at least l by four on both side where l is the span of the uh, slab right okay. So now let us code is given. Uh, in case of uh, flange beams, we have to take the effective width. Okay. So suppose we have a slab system like this. Okay. This is the center line of the clear distance of the slab. This is the center line of the clear distance of the slab. Okay. So this half clear distance, plus this half clear distance plus the web of the steel beam will be equal to. B, okay now this B is the width flange width actual but the code says okay the actual compression stress distribution is maximum at the center okay, of the flange and minimum at the edge of the flange okay the nature of this compression stress distribution is very is very indeterminate the code, the code IS 456-2000 suggests to use the imaginary width of flange over which a uniform compression stress is as we could take it. So we take it to width BF where the stress is uniform. Okay. So this is the formula given. Okay. L0 is the distance between the point of zero moment of the beam. Okay. BW is the width, uh, width of the web and DF is the depth of the flange. But this should not be greater than B. Okay. If it is greater than B, then B will be your flange uh, width, right? So let's start the design. Okay. So over here, L1 by L1 is the clear uh, span that is uh, three meters minus 0.23. That is, you have to take L1 by two. So that turns out to be 3000 minus 230 divided by 2, 3000 minus 230 divided by 2, okay, plus the W, BW, that is 330, that is 3000. Now BF turns out to be 1714. This is less than this, so we will take this as our effective width. So this is our effective effective depth of, I'm sorry, depth of length, depth of web. Width of web and total. Right? So 
cases for behavior of T beam section at the ultimate limit state, right? You can have three cases. One, the neutral axis falls in the plane. As we do uh, neglect concrete in tensile zone, okay, so we can make it angle okay, and we can find ESD using this formula. Okay. Second case, the neutral axis falls in the map, but the strain point zero zero two falls in the plane. That is, the plane depth of the plane is greater than three x two by seven. Okay, then you can take, you can divide this T beam into two parts. Range one, range two, okay, and this is right. So this will be the stress diagram formula, where you can assume to be a rectangular stress. If a rectangular stress that is 0.447 FCK into YF by where YF is equal to 0.15 XU plus 0.6 DF, okay, but it should be less than DF, right? And another stress diagram for will be for this rectangular, right? So these are the formulas through which you can find ES2. The third case. And the neutral axis falls in the web, but the strain point 002 falls outside the web. That is, EF is less than 3x by 7. So this is 3x by 7 t here, and DF is t here. Right? So in that case, the only change is that YF will be completely equal to D. So all the formulas have been the same, but YF will be changed to D. So in case of T beam, the actual depth of neutral axis is found by trial and error method. In most of the case, neutral axis falls in the flank. Let us assume that the neutral axis falls in the bottom of the flank as per the figure. We are assuming that the neutral axis is falling over here, and we will try to find out that in which case our actual neutral axis falls. Right? So, from case one, we know C one. Okay, this is case one. Okay, so this is our stress diagram. C1, this is C. C is equal to 0 0.0362 FCK. BF. BF. We have to take BF over into XU. XU we are taking as 150. Okay. The thickness of flat is 150. So, okay. So we are taking C1 is equal to this value and D is equal to 187 Now, moment at end support. Okay. This case, okay. This is moment and edge support. Moment at support of uh, support three and moment at end support. Right? Okay. So moment at its end support is this much. Moment near the middle of the end span is this much, and moment uh, at support next to end support is equal to this much, right? So. We know that first we will find the ultimate moment carrying capacity of the fraction when, when it is case one that is equal to C into linear arm, right? C into linear arm, right? So we will find the ultimate moment carrying capacity of the fraction when the neutral axis is at the bottom of the flange, right? Okay, so we get at equal to this this is C, this is liver arm, X U is one fifty. Okay. This gives eight one four point five kilonewton meter. But our design moment is one twenty five, which is less than this. So we can say the neutral axis falls in the flange. And so now we can find the neutral axis Okay. Simple as the section is singly under reinforced rectangular section, we will use this formula. But instead of B, we'll get, you will have to replace it in by BF. Okay. Or also, it is to be replaced as BF. So the ASC required is 710 mm square. So we will provide 220 plus 112 mm diameter. So ASC provided is 741 gradient. Okay. So PT provided is 0 0.67 to 6.7. So XMX is C equal to T. T. Okay. And this is C. X U is over here. And so you find x equal to 21.55, which is less than 150. So the actual neutral axis falls inside the flange. Okay, so this is true over here, right? Now, moment at support 3, okay, is 149.2475. Uh, 
our MU limit is found to be 150 times. So we will design this section as single unit vertical rectangular section. So using this formula, you get AST is 1012 provide 220 plus 216. AST is 1030 greater than this. So okay, PT is 0.85. Now providing moment AST for the moment, right? End moment is this one. Again, we will design it as singly and reinforced section. AST is 360, provide 216 bars. So AST is 402 greater than this. So so PT provided is 0.35 and AST minimum required is 235. AST provided is greater than AST minimum. So okay. Again, check for deflection, right? In case of T beam, okay, we can also do the analysis of T beam. Okay. Okay, our width of flange is 1714 plus 10. One seven one four rest M. Now flange depth is one fifty rest M. The width depth is two thirty. Width depth is uh, four hundred. And uh, effective depth D one we have considered as fifty. Phi is four one five. F C K is twenty. We can draw a graph. Okay, you can again directly get the values over here. And we can see. Uh, that again over a year also uh, that in case of under 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 it was t section okay graph for pt by mu is almost linear right? so we can also do the analysis of t section like this right now check for deflection uh, for deflection uh, we will use this graph uh, this is this will give us the reduction factor okay that is to be multiplied by the L by D basic okay, for the ratio of web width to length. Okay. And uh, then uh, for finding KT and GC, uh, the procedure remains the same as in case for rectangular section. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Moment near the middle of the end span. Okay. That is uh, T section, okay. That is found to be 125. A PT provided over here, PT provided you have to take BF by D, okay. So that turns out to be 0 0.0828. Corresponding KT is found to be 2.04 and KC 1, okay, of figure 5 of highest 4, 5, 6, 7. BF by BW by BF ratio is 0.134. Okay, so when the ratio is 0.134, we get reduction factor of 0.8. Okay, so we are getting 0.8. So LD, L by D allowable is equal to L by D basic into reduction factor into KT into KC that is 26 into 0 0.8 into 2 into 1 that is 41.6. LD, L by D actually is 5000 by 500 that is 10 less than 41.6. So we will get Okay. Now we come to the shear, check for shear. So this is the, uh, these are the coefficients we will take for finding the shear. We use outer face, this is the outer face, and O3, that is 175.17 kN. We use tau V is 1.523, less than tau V. PT provided is 0.89, and outer face of support 3. Tau C corresponding point T V is tau V is greater than tau C. So V S is equal to 106.17. And you can find the stirrups equal to 170.1. Required at this phase. Okay. And this will be less than this three, which is lesser. So provide two eight M two leg stirrups at 170 M center to center distance 0.25 L from support three. Okay. So this is support three. Okay, we have provided this. Now coming to the end support. That is this support end. Okay. So this is uh, these are the coefficients. Okay. 
Please remember we have to add 0 0.05, 0 0.05 because the beam falls on a free end. So as per code. So total kilonewton BU is 134.34. For me, tau V comes out to be 1.167 less than tau C max. PT is 0.35. Tau C corresponding is 0.412. Tau V is greater than tau C. Provide VC that is 86.6 newton. Find this that is 209. And this should be lesser than this, which is less. So provide 8 mm2 leg stereo support. Uh, 200 mm center to center for a distance 0.25L from the face of the end. So, this is that we should be provided. Okay, and for in between area, provide two legs at 300 mm less. Okay, so this is how we have designed the view. Okay, okay, now coming to the summary. Okay, this is summary of the whole problem. For beam B, beam B1 is 230 by 500. Beam B2 is 230 by 550. Beam B3 is 230 by 550. Okay. Okay. Over here in beam uh, B1, we have taken is a taken the section as singly reinforced section. Over here we have taken a singly reinforced section. Over here we have taken a doubly reinforced section. Over here we have taken a singly reinforced. Over here we have taken a singly reinforced. Over here we have taken a singly reinforced. Over here we have taken a single reinforced. Over here we have taken a T B max. Over here we have taken a single reinforced. Right? So this are the skill which we got from calculation. These are the moments we got from calculation. So at this support, this steel is 120 plus uh, one uh, 120 mm plus 169 mm bar. Okay, this is 225 mm bar over here. Okay, this is 320 mm bar plus 116 mm bar. Okay, over here. This is 220 mm bar plus 216 mm bar. So we are providing over here the greater of these two. Okay, this is greater of these two. So over here also we are providing the same. Okay, now 220. Okay, so we are providing 220. Okay, over here we are providing 220 plus 260. Is required. So 220 plus 260. Okay. And in DB max, we are providing 220 plus 112, 220, 112. Okay. Over here 260, 216 mm diameter. So this is how we provide the steel. Now over here, code says you have to provide steel greater than 20% of the maximum, right? The maximum of this turns out to be a little bit greater than uh 2 mm bar required, area of 2 mm bar required. So we provide 3 mm, uh, 3 numbers of 12 mm diabars over here, right? Over here also same. And over here, greater than 20% of this, that turns out to be 2 12 mm diameter, right? So this is how we provided our steel. Now, regarding steel ups, okay? Over here, up to this distance, we have to provide steel ups up to as uh, at the 130 mm center, okay. So over here, 200 mm center to center. Over here, 145 mm center to center. Over here, 190 mm center to center. 300, 190, 170, 300, and 200. Right. Okay. Now, when you come at the end, the anchorage, this anchorage from here to here, should be greater than 3. Now this this beam uh, over here uh, the steel uh, we are providing is 220 plus 1 12 mm dia. At this distance you can cut it that 12 mm dia. Okay, from here until 20 mm dia will be continued to here. Right? And this distance is 0.75 meters. Okay, and uh, from here that is 0.75 meters. That is from here. To here, this distance should be at least greater than the ND of 25 mm diabars in compression. Okay, this is 25 mm diabar. So, this length should be greater than the LD of 25 mm diabar in compression because this area is under compression, right? This bar is sorry, this bar is under compression because tension is, over here it is hogging, right? So, tension will be at top and compression will act at the bottom. 
civil edges bar from here should be extended till here and this distance should be greater than LD of 20 mm bar in comparison. So this is how you can design and draw do the complete design of continuous beam analysis. I hope you must